lid's not on properly. Well, 705 subscribers. Thank you, everybody. Hopefully, I can get that higher, but we'll see. Got some more content for you guys today. We're going to do episode two of OpenSense installing Zen Armor, which turns this awesome firewall into something even more awesome. Kind of brings me back to Untangle. It turns it into an Untangle box, but for free. That's right, free. But there's a caveat. There is a paid part of Zen Armor that allows you to get even more things, and that's going to be in part three. But part two, I'm going to show you how to install it on OpenSense, and we're going to use the little box that Oliver gave me, which is a quad core, four, yeah, quad core with eight gigs of RAM, and it runs this just fine, perfectly. In fact, it's easy to install too. So today, thank you for everybody. I'm going to install that and we're going to do a base configuration just to get it functional. And then after that, we'll go through some more settings. And then uh, I'm going to show you some other stuff that I did along the way that I made a mistake of in video one. I forgot to add the gateway and the subnets into the DHCP server. When I was playing with it on my computer over here after the video, I was like, hey, wait a second, I forgot to do that. So I'm going to show you adding that in first. And then we'll go ahead and install this off. I haven't changed the usernames. I haven't done much to this. I did add a rule for an alias, but we'll show you all that stuff too. So root. I did update the box to the latest version. Um, what are we at? We're at 22.7.8. The 22.7 to 22.7.8 was a awesome update, but you didn't have to reboot. So anybody that wants to do that, easy to do. So in here, what I did wrong last time was under services, DHCP, and the guest network, I forgot to put in DNS and the gateway. If you don't put that in there, it'll hand you out an IP address, but you won't be able to route and do anything. So you have to remember to do that. And I also made the mistake of on what I did my interfaces, and I don't know why it defaults to this, but I don't know, maybe I'll look up why and then answer in video three. If you go to your guest network here, it defaults to a 32 network. And when you put in your IP addresses as a wide uh, 24, it won't work. So when you do this, just remember to add the 24. So now that I've shown you where I made my mistake, because we all make mistakes, it is what it is, all we have to do now to install Zen Armor is pretty easy. So let's go at this. Uh, we go to system, firmware, and then plugins. First, we need to type in OS Sunny Valley right here. So we need to do this one right here. So we'll go add. So this goes out, gets all the packages, and installs this. And then what we need to do is you need to go back to packages and we need to go os dash there it is so this one right here so we need the agent updater and the actual normal package so we'll do the first one we'll do os sensi we'll go install and we'll go install this one takes a couple minutes but that's fine this box isn't that that slow as this is installing I figured out on my box, because I run this same setup times two, one for the home lab and one for the house. When I'm doing this, I'll show you that I created a voice LAN on the um, last video. And the reason why I did that is because when you're setting up Sensi and you're going through the wizard, you want to get rid of the voice. You don't want to add that one. You want to maybe add your, your LAN local one and your guest network into it. But you don't want to put the voice network in here because we don't need to filter anything out. The voice LAN network is just for SIP phones like this one over here. So you don't want to add that to it. I found that out the hard way. Okay, so this one's done. Let's see if there's any more. Uh, we want to go back to plugins. It'll say that this is installed now. This is installed and we want the agent. And the reason why we want the agent is because I'm going to show you what the cloud can do. And if we install this, then we can add this, your firewall to the cloud, which is really sweet. So let's do that too. Okay, that one's done. So now what we need to do is just go back to status, check for updates, make sure there's nothing else that we have to update. Okay. 
all my packages are up to date. So then what we do is we go back to lobby dashboard and just second then I push that. You see that how Zen Armor is now over here? You see that? So now we have that package installed. As you can see, the specs of the box are right here. Quad core 1.6, um, I believe it boosts to 2.2. So it's good. It's perfect for all this. So let's run through the quick wizard here and have a, a look at how that gets installed. So Zen Armor, we want to go to, I think it's dashboard and it forces into it. Yes. So if you click the dashboard, the very first one, it'll force you into this um, update and then we'll be able to do the configuration here. So we are ready. So we have to click that to say, yes, we want to run through this right now instead of just going past it. So we'll click that and we'll go proceed. It's going to go through all the specs and make sure that the box is capable. It says it's detected low end hardware, which means it'll still run. And I haven't had any problems with it because I have another one of these or had this running as my main box. It worked great. So it's just not going to be the fastest like my home lab there where it's got an eight core atom with 16 gigs of RAM. So yeah, so we're going to go next. Install local. We'll go. Yes. We'll click the proceed here. I can see that the uh, hard drive over there on the box is fl uh, flashing. It's doing stuff. I moved it from over here because I was trying to do stuff over here the other day. So it's over there now, not in front of me. Okay, next. We want to keep it the defaults. We don't really need to change anything. But remember where I said we have to add the LANs into this network? So I have three here. We have LAN. We'll add that. We have the guest. Yep, we'll definitely add that because these are the networks that you're protecting. Now, just so you know, once you get all through this and you add more VLANs because you have to do more stuff to your firewall, you can go back into this. And when I first tried this six months ago, I added a VLAN and I was like, why is nothing not working? Because it needs to go through this. And if you forget, it won't work. We're going to leave the voice LAN out. And then after that, we're going to push next. We don't need to protect the voice network. Uh, these are all the default settings for web configuration. We'll just leave that and I'll go over some of those things after. So we'll go next. We're going to leave this at small. Maybe I'll leave it at, I'm going to leave it at small too. So 50 devices. If you have a more powerful box, you'll get more options. Since this is a box that's suggesting nothing more because you don't want to maybe kill it, right? So we'll go next. Uh, we're going to use the free version and in video three, I'm going to show you guys the pros and cons of what free does and paid version does. Now free does a lot. Just so you guys know, the free will work for a home network just fine. You'll have no issues with it. It actually works really, really well. So we're going to leave it like this. We're going to click next and then finish. This part takes a couple minutes, so I'll let it do its thing. It's done. That was pretty quick. Refresh. We don't need the 15 day trial. We don't want to manage the cloud yet. And we're going to. Never mind about that. So now let's go to check for updates. Cool. We're up to date. Let's go to back to the dashboard, make sure we have no issues. Oh, look, pretty graphs. And these graphs are very, very nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to policies. You get one policy. That's the word I was looking for. I couldn't remember what else, but you get one policy for the free version. Now, if you want the paid version, you could do multiple fall policies. So say you have this at home and you have more than two or three VLANs and you want to apply a policy to the guests that's more tighter than the one at home. So say your guests, we don't want them to be looking at drugs or alcohol or adult stuff. You could apply that to them, but at home you've only got adults. So you don't really need to protect them from the adult stuff or other categories maybe. So you can create different policies, but that's one of the things that you get with the basics and the free or the free and the paid version. There's more things in the paid version, but we'll go over that in three, but I want to show you that right now. So the base policy, if we click actions, 
we can turn on certain things. And I'll show you what happens when we turn on too many things. So yeah, we want to block malware. Yep, for sure. We want to block phishing servers. Mm, doesn't really gonna do anything. Spam sites, sure. Hacking sites, sure, why not? Um, first sites, nah, we won't do that. Unsafe sites, sure, we'll do that one too. Then we'll push save. You'll notice that there's some stuff on the other side here, the right hand side. If I click one of these, it's gonna come up and tell me to, no, because you have to pay for them. So one of the things we might want is botnet CNC or phishing and malware outbreaks. If we click that, you just, it says you've just discovered premium feature. And that feature isn't really that expensive. Remember how I started telling everybody, let's go on Tango because $150 US 220 Canadian was a good deal. Well, that's a lot. So this is free if you don't use these features and it's great, right? So let's go to the application controls. Application controls means we can enable all of these, which comes free. So we'll go save. A lot of free things in here when you get the free version. Web controls, right now it's set to permissive, so it allows everything. But if we want to go moderate control, we want to block ads, we want to block adult content, advertisements, hate and violence, you know, the stuff that, oh, this one right here. Do we want to block that here? Yeah, we do. We want to block that. If we got kids around, we definitely want to block that. So if we save this, these things are all things that people want to use and under the free version exclusions uh, I haven't played with any of this but I'm going to go over this with um, the uh, version 3 so we're going to save these changes and it's all good to go okay so we're all set up 100% ready to go with the free version I don't have any examples. It's not going to really give me one, but I know it works because if I go to one of those sites, it blocks it and I don't want to show that. But anyways, those are working. So we're going to skip past that. Now there's one other thing that I want to show you guys. That's really cool. Dashboard. I believe it's under, no, it's under configuration. Um, I believe it's under cloud management folder portal. I can add this to my portal. So let's log into this. Let's log in here. Oh, and they have 2FA. Oh, love that part. Jason at jasonslab.ca. Look at that. So I have some firewalls in here. We have my other lab firewall here. But now let's add my, um, the one we just did here. So let's go close drugs.com. Oh, this one. Let's add to this. And we're going to call this Jason's lab demo box. Then we're going to go add. And now we have the other one. So we have three firewalls here and all the data that we have here. So let's go to uh, this one. No, not that one. This one. You can see all the information that has been collecting for the last, I think this one's been on since... Um, why is that stopped? Oh, probably because I've gone through, gone past too many um, firewalls. It looks like with the free version, you're only allowed to control two firewalls. That makes sense. So let's go back to this uh, one right here. We're gonna, I'm gonna delete this one after uh, video three so I can have that. But I think I'm gonna reach out and I'm gonna buy this um, subscription for $87. That's like awesomeness. Uh, so as you can see, it's given us traffic and you can log into this anywhere you are, where you, uh, where you are. The one thing I want to find out when I do the, um, paid version is, can I get into my firewall externally through this? And since I have 2FA, I feel a little bit more secure. I haven't tried that part. I don't have the free version yet, so we'll have to try that later on. But, uh, yeah, so you can see all our reports. And it's kind of like Untangle where it gives you all the information. It doesn't really have much right now because we are just set the firewall up. 
but you could see all these reports and what's going on through the cloud. Live sessions. This should show us exactly what's going on right now. I got Outlook running, so it's most likely going through that right now. Go back to home. Really good feature. I'm gonna cover a lot more of these later on. But as you can see, we have now uh, dashboard running. What do we have? C27? It'll go up and down since we do speed tests and start surfing around and stuff like that. But you'll see that adding this turns this firewall into a UTM like Untangle, but it's free. Free. I, don't, I like free right now. So one more thing I wanted to show you guys is on all my firewalls, if I have a guest network, we want to block that access to getting to the main OpenSense. Now, on my Mac here, if I type in the gateway of the subnet, so the subnet of the guest network is, let's see here, we'll go interfaces, guest, 192.168.10.1. Allows me to log into the firewall. If I click advanced and proceed, it logs into the firewall. You don't want that on the guest network. So as I was browsing Cody from MacTel.com network, he actually did a good video on this of doing firewall rules and stuff like that. And I caught on to RFC 1918 and I was like, oh, I'm gonna play with that too. Cause I'm coming from Untangle and that stuff's totally different and other sonic walls and stuff like that, we don't do those things. So I'm learning OpenSense more and more and challenging myself. But he did a video on this. So when you go to firewall, you can do aliases and you wanna create a RFC 1918. Now I'll show you the settings. In here, you put in the subnets of the LAN networks that you have in there. And when you add this to your rule sets, it blocks them so they can't talk to each other with one rule. So we have this one. So we have 192.168.12.0. So we want to start the whole subnet range. And then we have the 10 network, which is the guest. And then we have the voice. Now, you don't want to add this network, voice network, RSCF or 1819 or 1918, sorry, into that because it'll block other protocols. And you don't want to do that. So you don't have to. So right now this is added right here. So we'll go cancel. If we go over to our firewall rules and we go to rules and we go to guest, I have it in here. Right now it's disabled. But if I enable this, we won't be able to get to the gateway and get to the firewall and do any malicious stuff or start working at it to do any stuff. So let's go back to here. And we go here and we go check mark, gotta remove the rule, uh, that. And we go save, gotta push apply. I always forget to do that, but I'm getting used to it. And it's nice and bright purple, so I see that. We'll wait a couple seconds. Doesn't go anywhere. It's showing this page cannot be reached. Another thing we want to check is if somebody already knows what the seven is on the other side, like my, my LAN network, well, in this case, we're going to go 192.168.12.1. Can we get to that? No, it's blocked, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want. We don't want anybody to snoop or get to any other subnets. And that rule is there. You also have to put that rule at the very top of this and that's that's why it's up here instead of down here below i can go over that later on in one of the other videos if you guys want uh, but for now today's video was about adding zen armor and turning your open sense firewall into a utm there's a lot of things that we extra will do we'll do that number three plus getting the paid version and enabling that on there but today i just wanted to show you guys installing it and getting it configured under the base settings. Nothing special, just getting it running and focusing and going over those kind of stuff. So I'm gonna leave the video at that. And uh, thank you for everybody that's been watching my videos. I'm actually really liking OpenSense, so I'm gonna be doing more of that stuff. And if you have any questions or comments, you saw my email address in here and everything was there. You guys have a great day. And I'm gonna go edit this video now. Talk to you later.